Hi there, my name is Dave. I'm from Motels.com, and I'm here to talk to you about Lean Burn, the world's first engine control Chrysler system. Chrysler was the company in charge of the remote diagnostics for the moon rockets, and they also installed it on their Abrams tanks when they actually started making those. And when the moon rocket program wound down, they had a bunch of electronics experts in manufacturing with no clients and no use. So we saw a lot of racing equipment, suddenly digital testing, which brought their racing efforts forward quite a bit. We saw the world's first standard electronic ignition systems. We saw new alternators. And we also saw the world's first onboard computers used on cars. Now this was launched on some 1976 cars and all it did was control spark advance more intelligently than the simple vacuum and mechanical systems. And over the next few years, they'd have a lot of problems, uh, partly from materials technologies not being quite up to the up to what they needed to be. You know, it's hot and it shakes under the hood. So it was a major step forward in vacuum advance so looking year by year, they first start out with lean burn in some premium V8 engines in some 1976 cars. The next year, they simplify it a bit. So the 1978 lean burn system was then used on most of the Chrysler V8s, and it had a single integrated circuit board. And the system was fairly sophisticated for the time. It measured engine speed, that's revolutions, load, throttle position, speed of throttle movement, incoming air temperature, antifreeze temperature and the amount of time since the engine had started. So timing was advanced at higher engine speeds while warming up at part throttle and when the driver was really calling for power. Also at cooler temperatures and on the highway. Timing was slowed when the car was driving in the city and when air temperature rose to protect against detonation. So it was named Lean Burn by the marketers because it could be tuned to run engines at leaner fuel mixtures, which saved fuel and reduced emissions. So the inventor was Gordon Fenn. So the first generation system was pretty complicated. It had a completely different program just for starting up using a second reluctor pickup. The second generation dropped the dual programs and the second reluctor pickup. So the next move forward was the 1979 model year when they added an oxygen sensor and use the system to adjust the fuel mixture. And this required a special carburetor called an electronic feedback carburetor. The earliest systems all used analog computers and they started using digital computers with the 360 V8 in 1980 cars. Now, although Lean Burn has a pretty bad rep in the enthusiast community and most people think of it as only being the 70s, the fact is that it was also used in the 1980s on the Reliant and Aries with their 2.2 liter engine. And those had electronic feedback carburetors from the start and they had pretty good reputations. They had adaptive memory starting on some of the 1982 four cylinders. And by then, pretty much all Chrysler cars had a feedback carburetor system with a catalytic converter. Even when they moved to fuel injection, it was pretty much an outgrowth of the same system. And so Lean Burn, you could argue, continued on into modern cars.